2061 AD, humanity made a shocking discovery that changed the course of human history. The Black Pearl Gateway megastructure was found in the outer periphery of the solar system, and its origins and creators remained a mystery. But it was clear that the Black Pearl held incredible technological advancements. Over the next few decades, mankind conducted successful surveys and expeditions on the Black Pearl, partially reverse engineering the technology and gaining insights into faster than light travel. This technology was a breakthrough and it was the first time humanity had ever encountered such advanced technology. In 2191, mankind achieved their first successful FDL ship travel, reaching the Alpha Centauri and Cirrus star systems. Surveys were conducted on the planets in these systems, and the results were promising. The surveys showed that there were planets in these systems that were capable of supporting human life. By 2098, mankind has successfully colonized planets in both the Alpha Centauri and Cirrus star systems. This was a monumental achievement, and humanity celebrated as they established their first colonies beyond the bounds of their own solar system. This was a turning point in human history, as for the first time, mankind had a chance to expand beyond the limits of Earth, and this discovery opened up new possibilities for the future of humanity. The Black Pearl Gateway Megastructure has not only changed the course of human history, but also opened a new chapter in human civilization. The discovery of this mysterious structure had led to a technological revolution and humanity's ability to travel the faster than light had opened new frontiers and possibilities for mankind. The future looked bright as humanity continued to explore and colonize new worlds. But as they explored this new frontier, they knew that they were not alone. There are other beings out there, and humanity would have to be prepared for whatever dangers they might encounter. And it was a time of excitement and uncertainty as mankind ventured out into the vast expanse of space, not knowing what the future would hold. 2131. Humanity is at war. A contact has been made with an alien life form, codenamed the Preferent Swarm. The Swarm are a race of monstrous alien beings that exist only to consume and destroy all other life in the cosmos. They are an ever evolving species constantly adapting and evolving to better suit their needs. After almost a half a century of spacefaring and colonization and achieving permanent presence in six star systems and colonizing six habitable planets, mankind is now facing a foe it cannot defeat. The Prithran Swarm are speculated to have originated from a distant galaxy, where they consume all life before moving on to the next one. They travel through the void of space in massive fleets known as hive fleets, each consisting of billions of individual organisms. These fleets are led by massive intelligent creatures known as hive ships, which serve as brains of the operation. The Preferent Swarm have no concept of mercy nor compassion, and will stop at nothing to devour every living thing in their path. They are relentless, impeccable foe and are known for their insatiable hunger and their ability to adapt to any situation. Despite their mindless nature, the Preferent Swarm are highly organized and operate with a level of efficiency that belies their seemingly chaotic nature. They are able to coordinate their attacks with frightening precision and are able to adapt quickly to new situations and overcome any obstacles in their path. The Preferent Swarm arrivals heralds the end of all life and is always met with despair and hopelessness. As humanity struggled in a war against the Preferent Swarm, it became very clear that mankind stood no chance against the Swarm, nomadic aliens who sought to consume all life and the destruction of humanity. Although slow in their advance, there was little mankind could do to stop them. The six colonies fell one after another and by the start of 2142, there was only Earth left. With no other options left, humanity turned to a desperate plan as a final attempt to turn the tide of the war and safeguard their future. All efforts were focused on the activation of the gateway portal, using technology that had been developed over the years and required the activation of a moon-sized gateway megastructure, and the assembly of a convoy of colony arc ships. This portal led to a nearby dwarf elliptical galaxy, 
offering the possibility of finding a new technology or weapon to defeat the Preteran Swarm, or, at the very least, and if no such miracle would be found, a temporary refuge for humanity to escape to. The White Star Initiative was in charge of the activation of the Gateway Megastructure, while the Black Star Initiative was in charge of the construction of a fleet of ARC ships and establishment of a settlement in the distant galaxy. The plan was to expand to this galaxy. Without the portal gateway, it would take the swarm a hundred years or more to reach this galaxy, and maybe perhaps safeguard humanity for the time being. There was no time for careful reconnaissance or preparations. The swarm were only a few years away from Earth. The convoy of ARC ships entered the portal on August 29, 2151, embarking on a journey filled with unknown dangers. Two weeks after the successful transit of the convoy of ARC ships through the Gateway Megastructure, disaster struck. Nuclear detonations were detected on the other side of the galaxy, and the megastructure suddenly went offline. The director of the Black Star Initiative, who was on board of one of the ARC ships, feared that the invasion of the Preteran Swarm on the solar system had begun earlier than expected, and that they had escaped just in the nick of time. The fate of the Earth was unknown, and many of the Ark ships believed that they were now possibly the last known human settlement left. In light of this, the director and the ship captains of the Ark ships decided to proceed with their intended mission to colonize a nearby habitable planet in a trinary star system. Half of the Ark ships would be disassembled and used for materials to build the colonies, while the other half would remain in orbit as emergency escape ships in case of a worst case scenario. As the fleet of ARC ships reached their destination, settlers began to establish their new colony, which they christened the planet and named it Sanctuary. Despite the passing of years and the likelihood of the gateway megastructure activating decreased, the colony never forgot the fact that humanity was still at war with the alien swarm. They maintained a large military force on standby in orbit and allocated a substantial amount of the colony's resources to defense, determined to protect their new settlement at all costs. The decades of silence were a dark time for humanity. Faced with the threat of alien disease, natural disasters, and potential hostile alien life, humanity constructed various cities in sanctuaries to ensure their survival. The city of New Manhattan was the first and most important of these settlements, serving as the capital and seat of power for the Black Star Initiative. As humanity continued to settle in sanctuary, it became clear that a system of order was needed to govern various city settlements. The Council of Humanity was earlier formed, and then later on, a federal parliamentary system of governance was established. This system was a reminiscent of the systems used on Old Earth, and was designed to provide flexibility needed to manage and govern the settlements planet-wide. Sanctuary's federal parliamentary system of government is a system of governance in which power is divided between a central government and individual states or provinces. This type of system combines elements of both a federal system in which power is divided between a central government and regional governments, and a parliamentary system in which the executive branch of government is accountable to the legislative branch. In the federal parliamentary system of sanctuary, there is typically a central government that has the power to make laws and policies that apply to the entire country, as well as individual states or provinces that have the power to make laws and policies that apply only within their own borders. The central government and the individual states or provinces work together to govern the country as a whole. The legislative branch of government in a federal parliamentary system is usually a parliament, which is made up of elected representatives from each of the states or provinces. The parliament is responsible for making laws and policies that apply to the entire country. The executive branch of government is usually led by the head of state, who is appointed by the parliament. The head of state is responsible for implementing the laws and policies that are passed by the parliament. One of the most important and critical factor of this newly formed state was the creation of its armed forces and consists of two branches. The Interstellar Planetary Defense, composed of Army and Air Force, and the Interstellar Defense Fleet. The Land Army is a military force that is primarily composed of ground troops, such as infantry, armor, and artillery. 
the purpose and function of the army is to engage in ground combat operations and defend a country's land and territorial integrity. Its purpose is to defend the country against external aggression by conducting offensive and defensive operations on land. The land army is responsible for securing and controlling the country's land borders and territorial waters, as well as protecting the country's population and critical infrastructure. They also play a role in maintaining internal security by responding to civil unrest and other emergencies. The functions of the army is to conduct a wide range of operations, from conventional warfare to counterinsurgency and peacekeeping operations. These operations can include reconnaissance, intelligence gathering, and surveillance. They also include engage in direct combat with enemy ground forces, as well as providing support to other branches of the military. The Air Force is a military branch responsible for defending a country's airspace and providing air support to other branches of the military. Its main purpose is to project air power and conduct air operations in order to achieve military objectives, such as defense against external aggression, reconnaissance, air strikes, and the transport of troops and equipment. Its main purpose is to defend a country's airspace against external aggression. Air Force units are responsible for detecting, identifying, and intercepting aircraft that enter the country's airspace without authorization. They also conduct reconnaissance, surveillance, and intelligence gathering to provide early warnings of potential threats. The function of the Air Force is to conduct a wide range of air operations. These operations include aerial combat, airborne assaults, strategic bombing, reconnaissance, and surveillance, all the way down to early warning and control. The Interstellar Navy is a military force that operates in maritime and outer space. Its purpose is to defend a country or organization's interest in outer space and maritime areas, as well as project military power in space. Their function is to conduct a wide range of space-based operations such as space combat, spaceport assaults, space-based reconnaissance and surveillance, space-based early warning and control, and space-based naval blockade. As humanity settled on this new unfamiliar galaxy, they took on the monumental task of ensuring the continuation of humanity in this new and unknown world. The long journey ahead would be filled with hardship, and now they have taken the first step on a journey that would change the course of human history. They had secured a future for humanity, one that would be filled with new possibilities and new opportunities. The long journey had been worth it. And now, the time has come to seize it.